<laughs> I will. I've been asked to do that for a long time. I will do it as soon as I'm finished publishing the physics papers because that has to be there first so that I'm not discredited. Um, you got to be careful in this world. Although I'm already way out on the edge. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm trying to minimize the damage. Uh, if, you, uh, if you look at it, and that's soon because I'm publishing in November. Uh, in what book? Uh, it's in uh, Temple University Press. It's a peer-reviewed journal. Um, and it's just the first publishing, which is an overview. And the uh, overview then will have sections that are published in other journals, uh, probably PhysRev and, and uh, math journals for the solutions we found to Einstein field equations. But uh, here's a quasar with the same dynamical vortices going towards singularity. Now, these vortices are 10 to the 6 light, light years. That's a million light years long vortex. You know, a million, at the speed of light, right, it would take you a million years to get to the end of that vortex. Okay, and that's only half. Okay, and that is that vortex is spinning at near the speed of light. Those vortexes are taught to be relativistic vortex. They spin at near the speed of light. Can you imagine the dynamics that it would take? Can you imagine the torque that generates? And they haven't calculated the torque? It's like, wait a minute. No wonder you're missing energy. Go ahead. Do we have any idea of the proportion of how much that torque could be relative to the whole mass energy of that, shall we say? We're in the middle, we're in the middle of making these calculations. It's not obvious because we have to add, um, uh, we have to have uh, to add a torque uh, and a correlate effect function to the space-time manifold, and torque is written in vectors, and space-time manifolds are written in tensors. So we got to convert and all this, so it's a big job, but we're in the middle of doing that and it's looking extremely promising. It's very, very good. And so uh, we'll be able to give answers to that soon. But here, look at the fractal. This is a quasar, a million light year vortex. Here is a micro quasar. Those are found inside galaxies. And those are three light years long vortexes but the exact same dynamics. Quasars, microquasars, and clap stars. All different scales, all same dynamics. You can see these dynamics at all levels. Here's pulsars. Here's again, same dynamic that you see. This is actually a picture of these vortices going towards the center of the pulsar. And then when you took a picture of the center of the pulsar, you can see the petals mm -hmm. emerge of the octahedron in the middle of the octahedron. Look at these twistors. These are the top and the bottom of the pulsars. And like I said, the same dynamics are found on the surface of the Earth. And actually, the same dynamics are found on the surface of the Sun, on the surface of Jupiter, and so on. So the final geometry is something like this. A double vortex, a double torus, right, which generates an equatorial plane of gravitational waves. Uh, and at the singularity, the 12 vertices of the vector equilibrium fractal structure, which determine the scale of the topology of spacetime. Now we wrote all the math for this and they work. When you write the math in group theory for these dynamics, you end up with all subatomic particles and all forces being accounted for.
so you know when you when now when you start to see things like this you start to think, wait a minute, how come these people knew about this? This is an ancient, ancient symbol that was found on a granite pinner, pillar in uh, Abydos, Egypt, in a temple called the, temp the Osarian Temple. Why is it that this object, this drawing, which is on the 100-ton pink pillar in the middle of that temple, is not in any picture books or history books anywhere or archaeologic books anywhere? It took me 10 years of research to go through all the books that were written on the Azarian Temple, from the first papers that were published from the archaeologists that found the temple to eventually, you know, all the papers and the books that were written. None of them had this picture in it. The way I got this picture is that a friend of mine went out there and took it. Okay? Why is it that this picture is not in there? I'll tell you why. Because this graphic is not carved into the rock. It's not etched into the <coughs> rock. This graphic is actually burnt, laser burnt, into the atomic structure of that pillar. Now when you think of ancient civilization 5,000 years ago, you don't expect them to be doing laser burn on, you know, hard surfaces at high levels of accuracy. Okay? Archaeologists have a really hard time explaining these things. When they can't explain something, usually the tendency is not to popularize it. So they leave it out. Some of these uh, symbols that are in the Orzarian temple, there's, a, there's no writing in all of that temple. Not one piece of writing. All there is is these things. There's a few of them. Some of them are chipped. Well, the laser burn is through the rock. So that actually, even if you chip it, it still appears on the rock. We have no current technology to reproduce this. That's why you don't find this in history books. The other thing is that the Osarian Temple is 50 feet below all the other temples at Abydos. The archaeologists tried to say, oh, the Egyptian dug 50 feet and then started building. Well, the Egyptian never did that to any other building. And actually, when the geologists went there, they went, no, that's not the case. The building was there and sedimentation piled up beside it. Well, when they calculate how long it would take to get 50 feet of sedimentation, that temple is no longer four to 5,000 years old. That temple is nine to 12,000 years old, maybe 10,000 years old. That's why archaeologists really don't like that temple. <laughs> In fact, they very rarely discuss it. Well, it just happened that if you take that symbol and you make every circle a sphere, then you have exactly the appropriate sphere packing to generate a 64 tetrahedron grid.
Hi, Mom. So here it is. Again, it comes out. Interestingly, in that temple, the Egyptian said was the foundation temple of their um, of their belief system, where Elizabeth, where Isis revived or Osiris. You know the myth that started the whole Egyptian mummification and so on was Isis and Osiris. Well, Isis, Osiris's uh, brother was jealous and he killed him. And 